Hi, I'm Rami Tamimi, a surveying and geodetic engineer and a PhD student at The Ohio State University. Today I want to talk about the iPhone 13 Pro's LiDAR sensor. This little sensor right here is capable of capturing thousands of points per second and creating real-time mapping using LiDAR technology. And while this sensor was not designed for mapping, utilizing the accelerometer, gyroscope, and the GNSS inside of this phone can allow us to create mapping projects using the LiDAR sensor. Now the accelerometer inside of a cell phone is used to measure speed. So if you're in your car and you are pulling up your navigation, your phone will tell you how fast you're going in comparison to the speed limit. Now the gyroscope is responsible for the orientation of the phone. So if you're holding your phone upright, let's say you're reading a news article, it'll keep the screen vertical. However, let's say you're browsing videos and you select one and you physically turn your phone horizontally, then the gyroscope will know that it needs to display the screen horizontally after you've physically rotated it. And while there is a GNSS receiver inside of the phone, it is definitely not optimized for any kind of real-time or post-processing corrections and is mainly used for basic applications providing us with 3 to 5 meters of accuracy. And finally, the LiDAR sensor. LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. By utilizing light pulses, we're able to measure how far away objects are from the sensor at the time of capture. So as I'm moving and the LiDAR is scanning, we should be able to create a map that has some degree of relative accuracy. Now this concept has definitely sparked the interest of a lot of third-party developers creating software and hardware to integrate with your iPhone and the LiDAR sensor to increase the level of accuracy. And today we're going to find the relative accuracy of this LiDAR sensor utilizing surveying techniques and then improving the workflow and optimizing it to give us the best level of accuracy using core fundamental surveying principles. Now, as a proof of concept, I want to scan this little bit of curb outside of my house. And I want to show you what kind of data we would get from a small little scan like this. I just have the iPhone, no accessories, nothing special here, just the stock LiDAR sensor with the gyroscope, accelerometer, and the integrated GPS in the phone. Okay, so I'm going to start the scan here utilizing an app known as the 3D Scanner app. It's available on the App Store for free for anyone to download. Now I'm lining up my curb and I'm going to hit start and I'm going to start collecting data. I'm going to slowly move. Okay, let's take a look at our results. All right, it looks like it's created the model for me. I already have the surface model of the curb, which is quite nice to look at, but I'm more interested in the point cloud data, so I'm gonna click on share, and I'm gonna click on point cloud, and select LAS. And now I have this small little point cloud file. I can import it into my computer and classify the points with elevations. That way I can definitely define the curb and the gutter much more easily and extract the data and be able to pinpoint different locations on the scan. So utilizing a SLAM algorithm inside of the phone, we're able to create a real-time point cloud that we can then take relative measurements from. Now understanding this concept is very important because now we're going to introduce a much larger scale project, one that's really going to put this LiDAR sensor to the test. What I have here is a 200 foot line with a stake every 10 feet. Now these stakes are about 10 feet apart from each other and they're lifted about one foot off of the ground. This is to ensure that we can classify the highest point on the stake, allowing us to find the exact position at the top of the stake. Now we're going to be stationing off all of these points to help us figure out where we are on this line. Over on this side of the fence, this is going to be station 0 plus 0, 0. The first zero stands for 100 feet, so there are zero 100 feet, and then the plus zero zero are additional feet to the 100. Therefore, there are zero 100 feet and then zero feet, meaning that it's zero plus zero zero. The second point right over here will be station zero plus one zero, signaling that there are zero 100 feet and that there are 10 additional feet, making this 10 feet from the point of origin. And now this stake right here is station 1 plus 0, 0, indicating that we are 100 feet away from the point of origin with zero additional feet. And on this side of the fence, the last point, station 2 plus 0, 0, or 200 feet from the point of origin. Now with a 200 foot run, the iPhone's LiDAR sensor is really going to be put to the test. And not only that, but any sensor integration that we then add to the iPhone will also be put to the test as this is a very long stretch of land and we expect to see some kind of error after we reach a certain point. How much error there is, when does the drift start to happen, is there any way to correct it, which method is the most accurate? Well, let's find out. Now in order to calculate the true positions of all of these stakes, we're going to be utilizing one of the most accurate pieces of equipment in the surveying industry. 
a surveying total station. Now this is the Sokia SX105T, a five second robotic total station capable of capturing accuracies between three and six millimeters. And using this total station, I'm going to create a baseline of coordinates for all of these points. All right, now I've got the total station set up on station two plus zero zero. I'm going to take the height of this instrument, Four point five five feet, four point five five. And on this side on station zero plus zero zero, I've set up a reflector prism pointing towards the total station. Now for foresight readings, I'm going to be using this small 1.45 foot rod with a little prism up top. I'll connect this to a large full-size bipod to help us keep the positioning of the prism as low as we can to the ground. This will minimize any kind of error that we might have with a longer pole. I'm also adding this little receiver up top. This is the Topcon RC5A, and what this will do is it'll use this little sensor up at the top to communicate with the total station so that we can enable the robotic functionality, and I can use this entire system by myself. So I always want to keep this rotated and facing the total station. Now the first thing I'm going to do is establish a baseline reading to our back site that's set up on zero plus zero zero. Okay, and measure. Okay, and we've got a measured horizontal distance of 200.05, vertical distance of 2.04 feet. Now given the measurements we just read, we're able to create a local coordinate system for our entire 200 foot project. So the coordinates of the back site will be assumed at 5,000, 5,100, with our units being international feet. And after doing some quick comps, I found that the coordinates of the total station will be 4,800.05, 5,000, and 97.96 for the elevation. And the reason the easting is the same is because this line now is north in our localized coordinate system. And now with all that preparation work done, we can finally start taking four sites and measuring the baseline coordinates for all of these points. So this is station zero plus one zero, zero plus two zero, three zero, four zero, five zero, six zero, seven zero, eight zero, nine zero, and one plus zero zero. All right, we're halfway done. One plus one zero, Two zero. One plus five zero. One plus six zero. One plus seven zero. One plus eight zero. One plus nine zero. All right, we've collected the positions of all of the stakes. Now that we've finished surveying using the total station, I'm going to be utilizing the stock functionality of this iPhone's LiDAR sensor and scanning this 200 foot line. All right, now I'm gonna start scanning using the Pix4D Catch app. The reason I'm changing the app is this app is the most compatible with all the sensors we're going to use, so I wanna stay consistent with all the scans. Here we go, first scan, no additional sensors, and start. As you can see, I am using the integrated GPS sensor. So this is everything that's built into the phone. Okay, still recording, looking good. And we're still scanning here. I can see all the scans that are happening here in real time. Nearing the end. Okay. And done. And taking a look here, I can see the entire scan from start to finish. Looks very good. If I zoom in, I see the stakes that are sticking out. So I should be able to identify the locations of all those stakes. 
Ultimately, we can analyze and see that after 100 feet of scan data, there is an RMS error of about one half of a foot. In metric, that's about 15 centimeters of error. Now every 200 feet, this is matching up because we have about one foot of RMS error or 30 centimeters of error. Now while using the LiDAR scanner for smaller sites might be feasible, after a long stretch you start to see a substantial amount of error due to drift. And so we need to start to look at other types of workflows that we use in the geospatial industry in order to solve this problem and increase our level of accuracy. Now if we look at UAS or drones, there's definitely been a huge improvement on this drone through the different iterations of the DJI Phantom 4. The original Phantom 2 had a fixed camera, similar to what we see with the iPhone. However, with the later generations, there is a built-in 3-axis gimbal. So when the drone is on, you can see that the camera is automatically positioning itself and compensating for any movements. Additionally, this drone has a built-in RTK GNSS antenna which means that it's capable of receiving real-time corrections while flying and correcting the positions of those images, providing us with higher accuracy geotags and overall better data. In the earliest days of drones, we supplemented all of the imagery with ground control points, points that had known coordinates that we identified in the scan and adjusted our data set. By identifying the known points, we were able to re-optimize our project and have a higher accuracy point cloud. So implementing everything that we have here with the drone to the iPhone, can we increase our accuracy during data collection? Let's find out. Now for the second data set, I utilized the same point cloud file from the raw data set that we had, but I've introduced ground control points from the coordinates that we got from the total station. At station zero plus zero zero, one plus zero zero, and two plus zero zero, I georeferenced these control points to the LiDAR scan, and these are the results that I got. At the halfway point between station 0 plus 00, 00 and 1 plus 00, 00 at station 0 plus 50, 00, we only see a little over a tenth of a foot, which is roughly three to four centimeters. Not bad. And on the opposite end, over at station 1 plus 50, 00, we had about 0 0.75 feet of error, or about 22 to 23 centimeters. A little bit more error, but hey, a little bit better than what we had before. This is contributing to the fact that the drift in error is difficult to compensate with just ground control. It means that the initial data collection needs to be improved and we need to introduce different types of tools like we did with the drone to our iPhone. I did the scan again using this gimbal and the beautiful thing about this gimbal is that it stabilizes your phone so that the gyroscope and accelerometer don't have to compensate as much. Being that there is no IMU inside of an iPhone, that is all the sensors that we have to stabilize everything and to give us positional accuracy. So it's important to have initial stabilization, therefore we can optimize the true position of the phone without an IMU. And what we found with this scan using the gimbal is that at station 0 plus 50, we only have one tenth of error, or about three centimeters. At station 1 plus 00, 00 there's about three tenths of error, or nine centimeters. And at station 2 plus 00, 00, there was only half a foot of error, or about 15 centimeters. This is a huge improvement from the raw data set that we had just by stabilizing the phone with a gimbal. Now, in emulating the workflow of drone mapping, I'm now going to introduce an RTK GNSS antenna for our iPhone. When I open up the Pix4D Catch app, on the top left corner, you can see I can switch from the integrated GPS sensor to the Viadoc RTK via Bluetooth. By selecting this, I can input my NTRIP information to connect to my local cores network and receive an RTK correction for my phone's position. And there we go, now our status is RTK fixed. Now I'm gonna do the same scan with RTK corrections on my phone. Okay, and stop. And there we go, we have the same scan now, but with our Viadoc giving us RTK corrections. And so analyzing the iPhone's LiDAR sensor with RTK corrections, we can see that at station 0 plus 50, there's about a tenth of error or three centimeters. At station 1 plus 00, 00 there's about 18 hundredths of a foot of error, which is about five and a half centimeters. And at station 2 plus 00, 00 at the end of the 200 foot, we have about 0 0.3 feet of error, which is roughly nine centimeters of error. 
Now with using all these methods, having RTK on your phone is gonna provide you the best possible relative measurements because it is going to help you minimize the drifting error. Having a gimbal is definitely not bad. It is definitely more affordable than using an RTK antenna on your phone. It provides you with a lot more accuracy than just using your phone in your hand. If you'd like to learn more about this project, I encourage you to check out my publication, Relative Accuracy Found Within iPhone Data Collection. This manuscript was written for the ISPRS Conference of 2022. And you can find the link for it in the description. If you'd like to see more great content, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rami Tamimi, and thank you for watching.